When the newspaper headline, Life in a Test Tube, appeared in 1953, the evolutionary community became very excited because they viewed the work of Stanley Miller and Harold Urey as scientific proof that life could have been formed from chemicals by random, chance, natural processes. In that classic experiment, Miller and Urey combined a mixture of methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water vapor and passed the mixture through an electric discharge to simulate lightning. At the end of the experiment, the products were found to contain a few amino acids. Since amino acids are the individual links of long-chain polymers called proteins, and proteins are important in our bodies, newspapers quickly reported there was laboratory evidence that now proved life came from chemicals. I have to admit that the formation of amino acids under these conditions is very fascinating, but there is a major problem. Life was never formed in that experiment. The product was amino acids, which are the normal everyday chemicals that do not live. Even unto this day, there is no process that has ever converted amino acids into a life form. But this fact does not stop evolutionists from claiming that this experiment is proof that life came from chemicals. Evolutionists know that amino acids do not live, but they call this proof anyway because they claim that amino acids are the building blocks of life. Amino acids may be the building blocks of proteins, and proteins are necessary for life, but that does not mean that amino acids are the building blocks of life. I could go to an auto parts store and buy every single part to construct a car, but that does not provide me with a functioning motor vehicle. Just as there had to be an assembler to make a moving vehicle from those auto parts, there had to be an assembler of those amino acids to make the protein so that life could exist in our bodies. Chirality is probably one of the best scientific evidences we have against random chance evolution, and chirality totally destroys the claim that life came from chemicals. Obviously, this is one fact the evolutionists do not even want to discuss. Chirality is a chemical term that means handedness. Although two chemical molecules may appear to have the same elements and similar properties, they can still have different structures. When two molecules appear identical and their structures differ only by being mirror images of each other, these molecules are said to have chirality. Your left hand and right hand illustrate chirality. For this reason, chirality can exist as a right-handed or a left-handed molecule, and each individual molecule is called an optical isomer. What is the problem of chirality? In our bodies, proteins and DNA possess a unique three-dimensional shape. And it is because of this 3D shape that the biochemical processes within our bodies work as they do. It is chirality that produces the unique shape for proteins and DNA. And without chirality, the biochemical processes in our bodies would not do their job. In our body, every single amino acid of every protein is found with the same left-handed chirality. Although Miller and Urey formed amino acids in their experiments, all the amino acids that formed lacked chirality. It is a universally accepted fact of chemistry that chirality cannot be created in chemical molecules by a random process. When a random chemical reaction is used to prepare molecules having chirality, there is an equal opportunity to prepare the left-handed isomer as well as the right-handed isomer. It is a scientifically verifiable fact that a random chance process which forms a chiral product can only be a 50-50 mixture of the two optical isomers. There are no exceptions. The fact that chirality was missing in those amino acids is not just a problem to be debated. It points to a catastrophic failure that life cannot come from chemicals by natural processes. However, the problem with chirality goes even deeper. As nucleotide molecules come together to form the structure of DNA, they develop a twist that forms the double helix structure of DNA. DNA develops a twist in the chain because each component contains chirality. If one molecule in the DNA structure had the wrong chirality, DNA would not exist in the double helix form and DNA would not function properly. In order for DNA evolution to work, Billions of molecules within our body would have to be generated with the right-hand configuration all at the same time, without error. 
if it is impossible for one nucleotide to be formed with chirality, how much less likely would it be for billions of nucleotides to come together exactly at the same time and all of them be formed with the same chirality? If evolution cannot provide a mechanism that forms one product with chirality, how can it explain the formation of two products of opposite chirality? Chirality is not just a major problem for evolution. It is a dilemma, a conundrum. According to evolution, natural processes must explain everything over long periods of time. However, the process that forms chirality cannot be explained by natural science in any amount of time. That is the dilemma. Either natural processes cannot explain everything, or chirality doesn't exist. When we show evolutionists that the laws of natural science cannot explain the existence of chirality, they will say that the process happened a long time ago by some unknown method that they cannot explain. Really? Now who's relying on a supernatural explanation? Although they would never call it divine intervention, they certainly are relying on faith and not on scientific facts. Evolution just hopes that you don't know real chemistry. There is another problem with DNA and how it works in the human body. As part of the normal replication process for DNA, an enzyme travels down the DNA strand so that a copy strand of DNA can be produced. As the enzyme reads the sequence of molecules along the strand, and if an incorrect nucleotide is detected in the strand, there is a mechanism that uses other enzymes to cut out the bad nucleotide and insert the correct one, thus repairing the DNA. Let's look at DNA and this repair mechanism if indeed they were formed from random chance natural processes. If the repair mechanism evolved first, what use is a repair mechanism if DNA has not yet evolved? But if DNA evolved first, how would the DNA even know it would be better off with a repair mechanism? Can molecules think? DNA is not a stable chemical molecule. And without a repair mechanism, it would easily deteriorate by chemical oxidation and other processes. There is no mechanism to explain how DNA could exist for millions of years while the repair mechanism evolved. DNA would just decompose back into pond scum before the alleged billions of random chance mutations could ever form the repair mechanism. Evolution can give you a theory that might on the surface seem possible, but when true science gets involved and scientists start asking questions, the problems and false logic of the theory become apparent. This is why evolution hopes that you don't know real chemistry. Now I wish that I could say that the preceding narrative was mine, but it wasn't. Every single word came from a published article on chirality. Who was its author? Dr. Charles McCombs a Ph.D. organic chemist, an expert in the methods of scientific investigation, and a Ph.D. scientist who has 20 chemical patents. He knows his stuff about chemicals. If you don't like this video, argue with the Ph.D. chemist. Let me repeat one of his points. Quote, The fact that chirality was missing in those amino acids is not just a problem to be debated, it points to a catastrophic failure that life cannot come from chemicals by natural processes." End quote. In other words, evolution is a catastrophic failure. So, Mr. YouTube evolutionist, here's to chirality.